Out podcast. I'm your host Julian Camacho, aka Jules, and I am here with the one and only my dear, 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 dear friend, Av Av, <laughs> Avi Bear. <laughs> uh, it's very precious. It's uh, Avner Dachoach, aka Juice, aka Uncle Moneybags. That's right. It, it, Soon to be Doctor. Now that, that's that's <laughs> Doctor Moneybags. Is going to yeah. be your name. Um, now, not to make people think that uh, it's an anti-Semitic comment, your name literally translates into money bags? Yes. Um, it used to be in, uh, in Yemen, where, is where my grandfather is from. Um, you, you used to measure wealth by how many gold coins you had. But he was a, my great-grandfather was a rich trader, so he can only measure his wealth by the amount of gold va- vases, vases that he had. Vosses. Vosses. And um, so they, that's how they gave him like a pet nickname, which is my last last name, which means to count gold vases. So oh, it, so it's Uncle Money Vosses. Uh, money Voss. Right. Uncle. But as time evolves, we stop measuring monies through vases, and now we use bags. Mm-hmm. And so hence... Uh, May, uh, Avner Money Electronic Account. Mm-hmm. I think it's <laughs> At, uh, uh, Avner PayPal. <laughs> That's so, right. So wow. Okay, and and um, you are also a psychology student. You just wrapped up your uh, your your major, and you're on the on the PhD track. That's right. And um, so soon it will be, in fact, Doctor Moneybags. Doctor Moneybags. I'm gonna make Excellent. my students call me that in class. That's good. That's it's important to establish, kind of like prison, who's yeah. the boss. And there's no better way to insist that someone calls you something ridiculous. Yeah. If they text, if they send me an email, they can for sure just send me the the dollar sign. <laughs> You're actually looking. I, I heard you're also talking to uh, uh, Gmail to see that instead of having the at gmail.com, it's, yeah. it's money sign gmail.com. Money sign. That's right, Julian. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, um, we were earlier talking about, well, several things, including how ridiculous studios are and how fast they're rebooting all these different franchises. Um, That's right. And <laughs> we were the, 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 the Spider Man uh, new trailer just. Uh, well, it came out a while, uh, about a week or two ago. And yeah, it's actually, uh, I was reading that what it is is, um, I think it's Sony or mm-hmm. 20th Century Fox, 20th Century Fox, who owns the Spider-Man rights, and they have to have a movie every every certain amount of years. Otherwise, Marvel, um, by default, gets the gets the property back. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's interesting because it's, on, it's completely business, but um, the Avengers... And Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Hulk, all these movies mm-hmm. belong to Marvel, mm-hmm. who, are, who is now their own movie studio. Marvel Studios has become its own movie studio. And 20th Century Fox still has their biggest properties, which is Spider-Man and X-Men. And so the reason why X-Men First Class recently came out, the Michael Fassbender movie with James McAvoy, mm-hmm. um, they, they, uh, they have to constantly shift out. It's a out. part of that quota again. It, right. They have to make the those movies, otherwise they lose the rights to Marvel Studios, who is now technically their competition. So I wonder how subtle this can be. I mean, what's the legal term for a Spider-Man movie? Maybe you, you have a romantic comedy, <laughs> and it's like, oh, Judy, you know, I still love you. And it's like, oh, Spider-Man, what are you doing here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just goes away, but it's just enough to qualify. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Jude Law and, I don't know, Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, you know they're 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 off, he's, but it's completely non-related. He's an out of work lawyer who's also Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, and you know in uh, 18th century Ireland fighting the British invasion. Oh wait, and they're Spider-Man. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. And and so um, I'm not sure, but I think Batman might have the same deal as well as Superman yeah. with Warner Brothers versus DC. Yeah. I just want to say that I find that actually slightly less evil. I mean, I can see why. It is still a, a business concern, and they are still being in some way dicks about it because maybe, you know, maybe the the studio can make a better movie, and maybe they don't would have normally made a movie if it wasn't for this rule. But that's a little better. I mean, I I thought that they were making the movies just because they they were thinking, you know, it's been ten years, everybody, all the people, all the teenagers have aged, and now we have another generation. Let's just this this franchise is so big. Let's just make another one, make more money. You know who yeah, cares? Which yeah. is complete. Which is a little worse kind of motive, I, I think. Exactly. They. It's not so much. Uh, uh, it's, it's not purely let's make money. It's let's not lose money. Yeah, but you so, do hear that in from, especially <clears throat> from people that we appreciate. Like the, I heard that from Terry Gilliam, 
and mm-hmm. also this perspective. And also I heard this from, um, what's his name? Um, I forget, uh, the guy from Brick, the actor from Brick. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah, both of them have mentioned that every time they talk to like a business type, uh, corporate, uh, you know, movie producer, they always come onto the. They always have this like, uh, like ass- the worst kind of assumptions about the viewers. They always assume the viewers are idiots. And starting from that perspective, they're thinking, how can we feed them the most Joey, stupid thing Joey, that we can do? Joey, listen. Let me yeah. just explain something. The people are stupid. Stick yeah. with me, kid. You yeah. go far, straight to the top. All you gotta do. Is make a movie about monkeys in space. That's yeah. all we got. You know, <laughs> and it's just, voice. you know, it, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's even, that's even sounds even nicer. I mean, that it sounds like a movie from three years ago, Monkeys like, in Space. Monkeys uh, in well, Space. Well, it was, it was about the apes that were set off as astronauts. It's a, uh-huh. it's a talk from the makers of Shrek. Do they yeah. gain like intelligence? Or? <clears throat> well, the re- oh, it's a Shrek movie. It's like, it's really. It's like a movie talking animals. The humans can't understand them. And so they, re- oh, yeah. turns out animals are already smart. We're just too dumb to. Oh, it's like Babe. Kind of same thing, right? Exact same, same physics, same, yeah. same rules. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I can't, I can't think of how. I mean, okay. Uh, here's a, here's a good here's a movie studio idea. Eddie Murphy plays the ad guy who lies all the time. Yeah. And every time he says a lie, a leaf falls off a tree. And when the tree falls out a leaf, <laughs> he's gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. So that's so it's it's like okay, well, okay. So a movie about a corporate douche who can't lie anymore. Is, wasn't that liar liar? Like was right, it, right. <laughs> this is a recycled. I, yeah, it's it's yeah, whatever. But it's the mo- it's the motivation that's the worst part. I mean, if you mm-hmm. if you just genuinely come up with a stupid movie, I mean that's still unfortunate, but it's not as bad as just assuming everybody's because you know, everyone is viewers. stupid. Like, yeah. Don't you get it? That's, Everyone's that's, an idiot. <laughs> that's the worst. That's the worst part. And yeah, yeah we talked about it last time. Where mm-hmm. uh, you know, I don't know if it's true for all movies like this, but you know. People do tend to appreciate movies that are actually also are deep and have all these like, mm-hmm. um, you know, broader appeals. And you know, over time, you know, they get some some really good quality movies that we know, you know, I mean, get viewed more specific- and make more success. Specificity to me, I think, is the key to all things. That's what makes jokes funnier. Uh, yeah. The best example I have is the guy's so strong he can pick up a car. Okay, but he goes, he's so strong he can pick up a Buick. Yeah. For some reason, that's funnier, and I think yeah. it's a specificity. And, yeah. and, 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 and the reason for that is because it just requires more thought. It's more original. People, yeah. after a while, they just don't hear the cliches. It just goes yeah. over, you know, and then, but yet people, the thing, until Two and a Half Man stops being the highest ranking sitcom, yeah. this mentality will keep going. And actually, it's funny, I heard, I heard a quote the other day, which is, um, uh, uh, radio executives, the difference, um, the difference between radio executives and, and TV executives is that radio executives are stupid and evil, and the TVs are smart and evil, uh-huh. so it's just like, yeah, no, it, it's a shame that this is the world that we live in. At the same time, it makes the little triumphs, it makes the little, the the, the, the smart films that do come out, yeah. all that much more special. And Especially if you learn that a certain director, you know, fought with the producers to get a certain mm-hmm. actor that actually is better and maybe doesn't have as much appeal to a large audience or, you know, has a more high quality screenplay. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I, I mean, there was. I, I can't imagine how many studio people were fighting against the idea of Harrison Ford being Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Even though he just did Han Solo, a lot of people didn't think he could play a leading guy. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, yeah, no, it's 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 interesting that, that how, how things kind of play out in the end. And what was it? On the other hand, sometimes yeah. it happens the other way around and, <laughs> yeah. and you benefit. So, like, for example, you know, Mel Gibson, when he made uh, Braveheart, he actually insisted on um, somebody else playing it. He thought he, he thought he was too old. But, Interesting. But because he was Gerard like Butler, who who else could have? He played? wanted to play. Uh, it was, I think it was Jason Patrick that he wanted to do. <laughs> Jason Patrick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he he almost insisted on it, but and and they told him, listen, it's your big. You know, I think it was his director. He did Bra- not his debut, but his it was big, a big movie. It was. And they told him they basically con- conditioned him. They say, you know, you're a big time actor. You want to make a movie. Well, you might as well guarantee that it's going to be successful by, by being in. Right. And it was successful, but he did look a little old. But he was I mean, very, very good. So that's a, that's one situation where big time thinking actually worked. You know, yeah, right, worked out in our benefits. Yeah, you could you could have had. Uh, it, it's it's interesting. Like I, if someone told me that the producers forced Christopher Nolan to hire Heath Ledger as the Joker, yeah. I would have been like those fucking dicks, those yeah. assholes. Just yeah. let him hire Paul Bettany, like I'm sure he wants. Right, and would have been not as good. Not as good. And uh, by the way, about Christopher turn, Nolan, I turns saw out picture. it was Nolan. Uh, number one choice. Never there was there was never a contention. He always wanted Heath Ledger to do it, and Heath Ledger actually called him and said, "You know, like 
Hi, I like the idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> I might. I like the idea. The band begins. I got an idea. I did Jerica. Yeah, no, that's no. great. He took time from writing crocodiles to. You, you don't pronounce fun. the H in Eat Ledger. Eat Ledger. Eat. No. It's but, a great um, imitation. By the way, a little <laughs> anecdote about Christopher Nolan. When I saw yeah. like a, his first picture of him, I was just like, wow, Jude Law really got fat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I thought. Well, Jude is really thin, but he's extremely good looking. That is that is true. That that is also true. <laughs> oh, you think they're one and of the same? Yeah. They're, they're, I suspect they're the same person. No, I just that was the first time where I didn't see his uh, full features. I didn't right. know who that guy was. Man, Christopher Nolan can gain three hundred pounds, and I will probably still do sexy, crazy things to him. Filet, filet. <laughs> fellatio is like a borderline fellatio. Ah, uh, a fellatio. Neither here nor there. Just the tip, fellatio. right? Yeah. yeah, not even more uh, obscure. It's mm. kind of a, l- a l- more vague. Take that only French, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah. And um, so, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, background here. Mm-hmm. Um, now, from what I understand, you were recently in upstate New York. In an actual Buddhist monastery, is this correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was actually a retreat center, oh, which okay. is uh, it's very similar to a monastery. There are monks there, but it was actually a place that was fully set up for uh, volunteers, people that are maybe not, you know, lay people that are interested in, um, you know, learning more about Buddhism. Okay. So it was actually set up for people to volunteer, and you know, it was funded really well, so you can just pay with work practice. Okay, so a halfway house sort of between. The real world and and the, the monastery. Kind yeah, of. but you you stuck to a a, a monastery you schedule. You can graduate. It was from a pure. This. It was almost completely monastery oh. schedule though. So oh, okay. you, you were allowed like you know to use uh, computers whenever you want to, and you know you, you had free time, but also the, the the schedule was sufficiently rigorous where you get a were always. It was a yeah. So so it, it's like AP courses in high school to train you for college essentially. It's pretty much the same. It's lecture style. You take notes and yeah. you take tests. You don't there's no there's no daily assignments the way other it's high almost like, classes are. Yeah. So it's very much like college. It's really the teacher almost doesn't care if you pass out during the class or whatnot. It's just a matter of passing the tests. Uh-huh. Things like that. I mean it yeah, it was very I can't find the, quite the right analogy for that, but I mean that that's pretty close. I mean you did you we we've meditated with with the with the with the monks and okay. uh, you know we've observed the same type of practices the the main difference is that monks have a very extensively f- what they call precepts which is kind of like commandments in buddhism which are less strict so you you can you're expected to follow them but if you but the, the idea is that you don't take it too difficult on yourself if you screw up in some way and you know there's the lay precepts which are you know don't steal don't don't kill don't lie don't uh, drink intoxicants and don't engage in uh, inappropriate inappropriate sexual misconduct uh, behavior. What, what, what constitutes as inappropriate? I think I think the classic, but again, this is Buddhism, so you're allowed to interpret it whatever way you define as inappropriate, and that's fine. But because these are not commandments, these are precepts. Precepts, okay. But um, <coughs> probably the classic term when it was from the times when it was used probably would be you know sex with married women. Be for oh us, wow! Okay, which would be see. I was thinking heavily like, inappropriate. I was thinking like, n- you know, no getting past second base outside of outside trip. of marriage. Okay, so, so no, 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 so but it's a, not like that. So with a single oh, okay. girl, can we hold hands? Just to start from the bottom, I'll go. I'll, I'll keep going. Until you can, you can call her name, but not look at her directly. Ah, That's can I look at her directly through a hole in the sheet? Remember, you're not just a Buddhist, but you're a Jewish practicing Buddhist. So, so I got a. Imp- I get when I when I'm when I combine things I have to combine everything <laughs> then in one big pot. Well, it's like a cafeteria, and yeah. you're serving yourself, you know, a if little I'm bit serving- of Buddhism mashed potatoes, yeah, some 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 Jewish steak. Well, yeah. And- well, we're getting we're getting a little sidetracked in a funny way, but um, <laughs> I, I think Jubu you called it, right? That Jubu, that's right. Jew- Jewish Buddhist. A Jewish Buddhist. Jubu. No, but I would say I- Judist, but <laughs> that that might be interpreted it carries differently. a slightly worse. <laughs> Implications here. Yes, 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 yes it's yes. a little severe, but um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I, I th- that was the the, the main idea is uh, you you get for lay people you have five precepts, but it's not a big deal if you break them. Obviously, if you break, uh, you know, if you kill a person, you should feel. I mean, depends on the circumstances, but you should feel you should feel contrition, and you may have to, society may indicate that you have to pay for what you've done, 
but it, but in terms of Buddhism, you can always go back and be a Buddhist. Okay. So so the killing thing. But but before we get to that, what I just want to stand in self defense. Like. Well, that, it, then am, again, that goes to that goes back to the idea that you're loosely interpreting things. What if you're killing? I can give you another scenario. What if you're killing? What if there's a person, a crazy man with a with a handgun, right. and he's shooting twenty people, and you you're a sniper, and you have the opportunity of taking him off before he kills five more people. So obviously a viper. Yeah, a some Buddhist of these more sniper. That's right. <laughs> but but again, I, we were get, we were getting sidetracked. I, I for this idea, I'd like to th to think that the you you just calculate for me. Every person should think you know figure these things out for themselves. For me, I think about the total and the quality of li total amount of lives. Minimal amount of lives that are taken um, in terms of quality. Also, I, I think, I think it should matter in some circumstances. I mean, if it's like, I, I'm not sure yet. I, I'm not sure what I think about it, but that's that's something for people to consider. You know, if you have the chance between five ten-year-olds dying versus five ninety-seven-year-olds dying, you know, maybe that's that's another moral issue. But I mean, obviously, well, the total net amount of life that's being going to be stolen. Because right. killing is not really taking, it's stealing. You're stealing a person's years. Life. Right. And well, you know. It's less years a, being stolen. A, a baby never served in Korea the way a 97-year-old might have. Yeah, so but how much more better? So that's another issue. <laughs> that, that Those are interesting issues. But um, but separate from that, I'm, uh, this is just a brief overview of the precepts. But what I was going to say is when we volunteer, the, the monks have way more precepts on top of these basic precepts. These basic lay precepts are just them, what they call, like, you know, the minimal prerequisites for a normal human being. You know, don't okay. kill, don't lie, sure. don't steal. Yeah, where, don't where, where monks have hundreds of precepts, and some of them are really, uh, have very kind of more technical, even you can say uh, complex, confound uh, uh, explanations. Most likely, Could probably. be. Probably possibly. if I explored One enough. of the... I don't know enough about these rules, and some of them c could have a logic that I don't understand. But like going back and they're never explained to me. But I think one of them could be, you know, monks are not allowed to drink very cold drinks, for example. I think that's one of them. Hold on a second. So the after it gets past a certain de negative degree, or well, in general, they're not allowed cold drinks. I think that's one of the rules, but I don't know how these things work. I mean, how does that affect your chi drinking cold? Well, that could or, be that could be karma. Since this is a Chinese Buddhist school, that yes. could has to do some to do with you energy know, chi and mm -hmm. the Chinese uh, uh, medicinal philosophy. And uh, it's interesting because I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm uh, when I'm, when I watch Dragon Ball Z, they get really hot when they power up, and mm -hmm. it's it's funny to make fun of, but actually there were there were the Krillin in the Dragon Ball Z world. Mm -hmm. was a Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. And he has the, the, the six um, dots, whatever, which mm -hmm. represents a certain degree of m masterhood or something. Yeah. But basically, a lot of the terms in Dragon Ball Z actually were Buddhist. Mm -hmm. So when you power up, the way the aliens would interpret it is a power level. So they gave it like a, uh, they gave it a, a quantitative amount. Like there's a classic line when Goku starts powering up and then Krillin says, I never felt such incredible chi. And yeah. then Vegeta takes off his scouter, which is what you measure, the level of chi, except they call yeah. it power level. He crushes it and says, it's over 9,000! I've heard that. It's That's a, a very popular meme. It's a very popular meme. Right. Yeah. right. So so uh, the idea is what makes humans and earthlings so unique is that we can change our level of chi. But the point yeah. is, I would imagine the temperature thing might somehow affect, because basically it's heat. Things around them start to melt and stuff yeah. and, and evaporate. You know, well, so, the, idea, so the basic, yeah, you, you're right. I mean, it's true for meditation also that could even be just a pragmatic focusing, thing where cold water can make your kung fu less powerful. Right, right. So it could be one thing. Could be just pure health concerns. Assuming that they're, we don't know if they're right or not. But one of the complaints was one of the ideas with drinking water that's cool, too cold or anything that's too cold that um, um, is that it's uh, it's the temperature is upsets the natural balance of your body. Mm. If it's really cold, then it's uh, the temperature difference is. Uh, uh, from your body is, is large and so and you know it, it somehow makes your body adapt in some way and waste energy and, and maybe in that process can cause disease or something so, so that, that that's what i always found both uh fascinating and impressive mm -hmm. of the, the 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 how 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 practical they are and how pragmatic even if it's with a, their own um yeah. uh, realm of some what some people might consider a uh, uh, superstition or something like that. You know mm -hmm. the fact that they actually have a thought process involved. You don't do this because of this, and here yeah. are the consequences of doing this. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, getting getting in the way of of, of whatever they perceive as to be healthy. Because then the next question is, 
going to be, um, I understand you're also a big, um, you're an avid follower of, of the primal diet. And so I was going to ask, you know, cold water, how does that compare in terms of introducing a lot of noodles and rice <laughs> to their diet? Right? Yeah. I mean, that. Well, I don't know. I, kn I do know that cold water could be bad for you if you have very sen uh, sensitive digest uh, digestion. Oh, that's another question. Could yeah. it be maybe a, um, uh, a geographical thing? People in that area tend to have s weak stomachs for whatever diet purposes because yeah. of various things that grow in that area. And All so sorts of water. things like that. All sorts of cultural and geographical influences may take place. It happens. It just happens to be that in some ways, actually, um, Asian people tend to have uh, better digestion um, for other reasons. Uh, one of them being that the hot dog uh, eating guy. They they walk more, so they have a greater mm, sensitivity true. to gluten. That's a major. Uh, that's a major reason. So they can take in more carbohydrates, and they, they, they can afford those carbs because they walk everywhere. Because walking more <coughs> makes you less. Uh, it, it, it improves your in insulin sensitivity, and yeah, it does all sorts of th good things for your metabolism. Insulin yeah. sensitivity, so they, yeah. they 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 better eat less sugar than people who don't walk, or opposite. They they they're less negative negatively impacted ah, by sugar. Gotcha. Okay. So okay. a lot of times, what what happens is, especially for people who are overweight, when you eat a lot of not a lot of diabetes in China. I'm, I'm guessing. Well, maybe or, maybe less. Yeah, but but recent trends have, have shown that now that they're you know eating American copying foods. American right. style. Uh, driving not cars, just foods, but McDonald's. yeah, exactly, walking less yeah, and so forth, totally. that they're going to slowly show the same kind of uh, health decline patterns. Well, it, it's good to know that we're spreading our American ways. One, uh, yeah, bellies, and through bellies. Even though some people might accept that as a, um, as a negative, unpatriotic thing to say, I actually believe it. I'm glad that the yeah. standard is sort of spreading because yeah. I don't want the Chinese to win the inevitable war that is coming between America and China. So, yeah. you know, oh. I'm, I'm glad... You know, I, I like to think that the if other the war soldier... is a game of catch, <laughs> they're <laughs> no, winning well, easily. Well, of course, in my retarded brain, I'm thinking it's trench warfare. So, yeah. like, hopefully the Americans getting shot, getting tired. Like, hope the other guy's getting tired too. Uh -huh. And then you know, smash cut to the guy, you know, doing five push, you put push ups between firing rounds and stuff, yeah. and and doing it all blindfolded. And mm -hmm. it's like, sir, you know, then the, the, in the in the subtitles, take off the blindfolds. You know, yeah. then that's yeah, yeah. No, it's it's. It's uh, it's it's really interesting. Um, you know, I've always been uh, fascinated with Eastern culture since I was young. Especially, mm -hmm. I mean, anime was the main introduction to that, just because of how narrative is affected. You know, I I've al I always believed, even before I, I went to college and really learned about the, the nature of humanities, arts, literature, philosophy. I've always felt like if you want to know about a group of people, listen to their stories listen mm -hmm. to their mythology, listen to the morals at the end of those stories to get an idea as to what they value and what they find important. And very often, a lot of, you know, uh, oftentimes uh, the anime or, or, or any, you know, the Japanese animations, it, they, they, the stories always have these characters that they never want to fight. They never want any trouble, but they always end up getting into trouble and ending and stuff. And there's always that moment where it's like, kill me. And they're like, no. You know, yeah. and, and there's always that moment, and I'm like, okay, cool. So in this town, you know, and because and, also when I was young, I thought everything was in the United States. So I thought, like, you know, so in, in, in Japanton, yeah. uh, 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 Japanington, they, they, they believe that, um, you know, it's don't start any trouble, you know, uh, be nice, help others, um, you know, but if shit happens, throw them fireballs. And that, that's something I can get behind. That's mm -hmm. something that makes complete sense. Whereas Americans, you know, a lot of the, especially like the, the gambits, the Wolverines, the the, the the Batmans of the world, they also don't believe in, in in killings. But there's definitely that sort of pleasure and revenge a little bit. You know, it's a little more devious, a little more mischievous, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that speaks volumes about you know. Like, yeah, look at the Captain Planet. I, I definitely Planet. agree. I definitely agree. I just want to say I definitely agree because that's what I. I'm from this culture. I, that's what I also find more intriguing. It's. It's all more intriguing this uh, Western idea of a uh, character that's more complex, that's stormed, that you know maybe they're good, eighty eighty percent of their personality is good, but then they have all these you know fears and all these um, other maybe less uh, positive factors less that are noble. In, in yeah, and that yeah, makes yeah. and that makes the story a lot more uh, complex and a lot more interesting. So, right. and that's definitely I'm sure that that my assessment and my pleasure from from these kind of characters comes from from the culture. Yeah. So and 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 in that same that same vein of, I said, the, the yeah. mythology and the narrative to follow what general society, if you want to look at the deviations, the, the deviance 
of your society. Yeah. Uh, just look at that society's porn. Uh -huh. And that's how you get an accurate reading. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I believe that, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 Japan and Germany, uh, they're, for the most part, good. But when you look for the evil, yeah. you know, it's the highest amount. La I mean, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, but actually, Japanese culture is actually quite liberal um, that's relative actually, and to other crime, Asian countries. Ac I was so going to say, not, yeah. Germany, uh, Japan, Russia, and Florida. Those are the, the beacons of evil. <laughs> uh, and you look at our, uh, there's a great game invented by the great Adam Carolla called, um, uh, was it uh, Germany or Florida? And that's when they take these really bizarre uh -huh. and, 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 and just kind of um, uh, disturbing uh, news flashes, news stories, mm -hmm. and they have to guess whether it's, whether it's Germany or Florida. And I gotta say, it, it's a pretty tricky game. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to discern. It's like a yeah. mailman that uh, got disgruntled, went to his post office, and started beheading people with a katana sword. Right, right. And then the last, and the guy who's about to kill one of them, who fired at him with like a yeah. with like a luger or something. Yeah. And uh, so this just kind of challenges me to to make up for a game to to create a game where you make up headlines that could have been in Florida or Germany. The the one that immediately came up to me, I don't know why, but. Men loses hand from shark. Men eats shark's family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's actually that, that's actually a, an Israeli story, right? Uh, the revenge. Yeah, there. the sharks are all Arabs. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a metaphor, Julian. Yeah. The sharks are Arabs. Yeah. Well, um, that's no. It's it. Like I said, it's it's interesting how 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 you can't really hide. You know, our politicians can can say whatever they want about society that they, they belong to. You know, mm -hmm. like you hear a lot of. You know the real America or whatever that mm -hmm. a lot of conservatives will shout out, or or you know in between, you know kind of in between the lines where people will or even like you know extreme liberals will talk about, you know the more educated class who, who don't deny global warming or whatever it is. Both mm -hmm. sides insinuate that their brand of people are better, and really you can't that stuff you can lie and cover up and twist and turn however you want it, but you can't you know actual events actual crime records you can't fool and and the nature of those things are you saying are you saying some some countries are inherently more criminal or are you saying no, no, we no, no, are no, no, all no, the no. same no, i'm i'm well yes actually i mean if we want to compare third world with first world there's more incentive for crime you know it's a poverty issue not a race issue uh -huh. so so that's there's reasonings for that but what i'm saying is uh, different brands of evil not more not less but different different persuasions of evil oh yeah, yeah. it's all a feature of right and environmental those, influences right right cultural and what have you yeah those things are again a, a politician of those respective countries can lie and twist the facts however they want but i think it's in their fiction the the stories the 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 tv mm -hmm. the 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 kit the, 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 the books that come out from those places those are the ones that reveal the, the true nature of that society. And ironically enough, you know, uh, there's another line that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, artists tell lies to tell the truth. You know, politicians tell lies to cover the truth. And, right. and that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at where it's the, the, the power of fiction, yeah. you know, in, in terms of revealing certain truths and another mythology way, yeah. as well. Another, you know, one research professor was telling me that when you, when you want to observe a behavior is trying to find something like s trying to make a person do a mistake. If you want to observe a certain behavior, trying to make a person basically uh, do it unintentionally, but in a way that's consistent. If you can find a reproducible mistake. So you, using, using this idea in, in our circumstance, you know, you can observe a culture's uh, values based also on their uh, dysfunction, on their psychological dysfunction. So for example, you know, in Asian cultures when they value the family and the collective, as a more as opposed to you know more individualistic uh, you know Western world, um, they also have you know anxieties that are associated with um, mm. failing the family. There is a specific kind of disorder that right. has to do that, with the whole honor thing. Yeah, the failing the family, which it doesn't exist here whatever. because right. So you, the, uh, what's underlying that fear is the idea that family values are important. You know what would be an interesting uh, uh, study? Patricide. Where does it happen more often? Would it happen in the Western world more often because people care less about honoring thy mother and father and stuff like that? Or does it happen more often in Asian cultures where the pressure builds up so much, the only way to get rid of it is to destroy, you know, whatever yeah, but beacon you, of that is? That's an interesting question. I mean, I'm sure that those things have influences. For example, 
uh, in the monastery, I've met, um, I'm just an example of how high pressure can be very interesting, can mm -hmm. be create a very intense situation. Sure. Uh, this one uh, Taiwanese woman who was telling me that her sister, her son was this very successful student in, 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 in school, but she was very hard on him. And that's kind of typical in, in Taiwan to be kind of have very strict parents. And when he, he was like the leader in his class, you know, a social leader, an mm -hmm. academic leader, he was, you know, so he's a person who had tremendous pressure on him. And he told um, his mother, um, one time he went up to his mother and he asked her uh, if it was okay for him to go on a date with his girlfriend or something, and she didn't allow it. And so he threatened that he'll kill himself. But because the situation here was particularly, this is something that maybe kids would do in general for various circumstances, you know, sure. threaten something like that, but they wouldn't actually go through with it. But well, he actually did go through with it. He jumped off uh, like a four story building and he like broke his spine. Holy hey. shit, did he die? No, he's alive and he's in great depression now and uh, they're working on re rehabilitating him. Is he still with his girlfriend? I have no idea. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, awful. But, but the, yeah. the, the issue oh, here wow. is that probably 99% of kids would not, uh, would not have jumped. Maybe would have gone all the way to the building and not jump. But because he had the additional pressure of, you know, he's always first in class. You know, he's always sure. the social yeah. leader that he felt like, oh, for me, I can't, I have to go through with it. So even bad say, things he has to go through with. Right. Hmm. Interesting. So he, high he's pressure situation. super dedicated man to yeah, anything. To so everything. It can be very, sure. could be the worst give tool. me Give me someone lazy and I'll show you someone not getting into trouble. Right. That's uh, the great George Carlin said. You know, Hitler was very motivated. <laughs> you know, it's, That's uh, true. Yeah, yeah, Mao nah, was very mo motivated. Uh, uh, Joseph Stalin was very motivated. That's but, true. Uh, but, uh, but, in, but going back to your question, I'm sure... To some extent, that that's true. High pressure situation can produce like uh, yeah, terrible things. It, also, I also love the other thing mm -hmm. we were talking about off the air. Uh, I think it was, we were talking about this like a, a few years ago, actually. But the, some studies came out, and I, I recently watched uh, this documentary called "Waiting for Superman." Mm -hmm. um, great documentary, fucking awesome, uh, very eye-opening. Bias, I'm sure, like any other Michael Moore type documentary, except mm -hmm. certain things you just can't lie about, and those are the things that got me interested. Mm -hmm. um, what I thought was really cool was that the study about um, they took like these all over the world they took this uh, standardized test, and I believe it was the um, uh, the North Koreans that had the uh, the the highest scores, and uh, Americans had some of the lowest scores, but the North Koreans had some of the lowest confidence in their scores, uh -huh. and Americans had the highest confidence in their scores. Like when they took the score, when they took the test. Yeah. Afterwards, a little survey saying how confident, how well do you think you did? Yeah. And then the Koreans would be like, I don't know, man. Uh, I think I did shitty, or, or, or yeah, you know, I probably got a C or something. And they got the highest scores. Mm -hmm. And then Americans are like, Americans are like, nailed it. Yeah. You know? So it's 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 funny how uh, those things are inverted, and maybe that kind of yeah. goes. You know, maybe this, Con this confidence actually direct. Well, there's many issues here. There's like ten things here. Well, what I'm saying, the confidence yeah. is some kind of self-preservation here. Oh, is, that's is that's embedded absolutely with true. The confidence. They, I mean, I'm so yeah. cool. I better live. You yeah. know what I mean? Whereas this guy is like, well, fuck it. You know, and, yeah. and not only that, I will tell you this guy. If he had more confidence, he would just lie to his mom or just do what all teenagers do, and that's go with the girl anyway and then save face with the mom. Mm -hmm. But this guy insisted on. Getting the mom's approval, like this, almost was not about the girl. Psychologically speaking, mm -hmm. this is more about you know I put in a, a request in my mom's uh, mailbox and it was denied, and I'm going to keep on sending until I get that green stamp, even if I kill myself. Mm -hmm. And I can totally see how a lifelong of you'll never be good enough could lead to that. So that's that's what were, what, what were we going to say about? Oh well, I mean the issue with uh, with. Academic lean, lean performance. In, bro. I, I can see that the, the peaks are I can, The microphone can lean in. <laughs> yeah, well, just, you know, like, okay. Let's do one of these. There you uh, go. The, um, the, there's a lot of issues here with uh, with the math, with that math study. Well, the first thing is that Korean kids were studying when, by the time they finished high school, they're getting twice as many hours in mathematics and science. Mm, this okay. was uh, about science. Sure. So they were getting more, twice as much practice, first of all. So already we can't really judge how much their attitudes influence the score because the, the amount of time that they studied was not controlled. So it'd be very interesting to see really, uh, once they both study the same amount, what exactly, what kind of, how much uh, their views on the, on the, their performance influence it. Uh, but I think confidence is, yeah, definitely could be a double-edged sword. I mean, uh, that's one of the theories why women are, are bad in, ma in math and in science later on, is that um, 
you know, when the, when the young, uh, young girls get, um, got a lot of compliments for their performance. Girls are actually outperform boys um, in, in science and in math early on. Early on. And then they get a lot of compliments, but their compliments are tied to their identity, that these are not compliments just for the performance. So instead, a good compliments would be, you know, oh, that's a good job on this test, uh, Stacy. Whereas a bad compliment would, would be uh, something that ties your performance with your identity. Like, oh, you're so wonderful, you're so smart. Oh, uh, and okay. the so problem with these type of compliments is that, <coughs> and this is presumed to be a major problem, is no, that uh, uh, women or young girls tie their identity with being successful and doing well. And then as they go a little older and the math problems become more difficult, which is an inherent thing, sure. inherent part of the you know, learning curve where you're going to solve, some problems are going to be harder to solve. You maybe are going to fail a few times before you succeed. So just as a natural part, they, they encounter these problems and they do poorly and then they don't try again because they, beca because they have this identity of yeah. I, I got to be successful. So they just kind of shun science and academics wow. and, and, and uh, mathematics. And, um, and then they can't parallel park. Yeah, um, totally, right. totally right. Totally but admitted, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but th 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 no, no, that's I also actually one thing that they say about Asian kids. Also, and another advantage is that they say they they did a study where they had an Asian mother, and uh, their her son versus a American mother and their son uh, try to solve a math problem. So the son Together. goes in. No, so the son goes in mm -hmm. in both situations, and it's a pro and goes and regardless how well he does, a tester comes to the mother after the the, the son does the problem, and he tells them, you know, your son did very poorly on this problem and then he leaves and then the, the son has to solve another problem but before that the mom gets to coach them and the american mother who's again this is again tied to this like uh, where solving so a math problem is tied to their identity tries to get the kid to solve a simpler math problem whereas the asian mother mm -hmm. tells them you know focuses on the problem and not ties it to the identity of her son she just says oh it's a difficult problem let's try to go around it wow. she doesn't so so um so Amer okay so interesting so American women are more concerned with things like self esteem self identity it's American not so culture much performance well American culture not women necessarily okay but in this okay so but but for the, for American this is true for American girls and for yeah this is just no, yeah, less the just becomes right, right, less right, right, relevant right. to the, boys I, I I miss I misallocated the the the, the I miss uh, identified the the variable mm -hmm. which was the American and versus the, who, who was Asian it? right. A well, there was a particular country, or, or just uh, do you yeah. remember? But there, no, I don't remember. Okay, no. well, right, well could have well, been Korea. Okay, so so do you, okay, so that's fascinating um, because that makes complete sense to me when, yeah. when when laid out like that, and and I feel like it's so sad because now that I think about it, mm -hmm. um, definitely when I was younger, as far as academic performance in general, whether it was math or science, English or what have you, yeah. the girls would have better grades. Right. Um, and and it, like around like but then like it's around like middle school that shit starts to kind of shift yeah. a bit around the time where they start developing a bit more and yeah compliments start being that's, yeah. that's that's very interesting so it's not so much like here play with this doll while this boy plays with a toy gun it's more like oh you're so wonderful versus that thing you objectively accomplished is so wonderful right the the idea is that got boys at that age are more unruly and so they never get good to get those compliments to begin with. Right, nor do they so care because they're pretty confident. No, no, really it's not, <laughs> no, it's just that they're too, no, 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 it's just that they're too bratty where they don't do well. So that age where you, when you would get, when you would be sensi sensible to keeping those compliments with you, you know, that kind of association doesn't get built. Mm. Later on, it matters less, I guess, or it's different. So maybe yeah. it's just those early st school teachers that need to learn could, to. Uh, ah, maybe. No, well, could it be a coincidence that most teachers are women? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Obviously, strongly, yeah. Obviously, they're clearly women. No, um, uh, the, the 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 classes don't take place in the kitchen, so right, some, right, some no, men no. there. A lot of yeah. a lot of placenta in those classes. No, mm. I you know it's 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 very interesting how it yeah. pretty much. Nurture plays a bigger card than, than most people yeah. want to think it is. And, and I mean, I do believe that fundamentally, biologically, there are differences and there are different, um, there are, are, are uh, and men and women have different strengths, mm -hmm. um, but it's not in the strength that we think it is. I've mm -hmm. always thought that you know, things were, certain things were misallocated, like the belief that, um, for example, I feel like every, depending on what decade it is, the rational one between men and women, mm -hmm. the, 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 between men and women, who gets the rational card? Who, who's more rational? That, that I feel, depending on the decade, that answers answer differently. 
because mm-hmm. men are hocked up on testosterone and yeah. we're going to want to lead the way no matter what and that then rationale is abandoned but then we yeah. hear we hear things about like oh women are so emotional and 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 they get so um caught up on on certain details that they become irrational in in, in their job like for example the classic scenario where the woman dreams a guy um was cheating on her or beating on her and then they wake up and then she gets mad at the guy the whole day that wouldn't be described as rational but i, I feel like mm-hmm. um uh, ira- um, you know, being irrational, it, that that falls pretty evenly between men and women. I think so. Too. I can give you a similar, uh, um, you know, scenarios. situation for men. Like oh, a, that's a, a, dude, a, totally. one for men is that men have, um, and it's obviously all these uh, rational, irrational ones are dictated. I think you know, going back to Buddhism, is by you know the way that you define yourself, and that's how your fears. Uh, that's that dictates what kind of fears you have. Right. You know, if w- your fear is going to be anything that's inconsistent with your identity. If you think you're a big, strong guy, right. for example, a one fear player one, is scared of breaking w- his ACL. Right, right, it's right. His biggest fear. One one example could be so for men, the the one of the values that instilled in our culture is that we need to be the provider, uh, that takes care right. of family. So a major reason for suicide for men losing is, their jobs is losing their jobs and not being able to take care of their family or being poor. It's a huge, and that could, that's so strong that it can come up in a really c- kind of like you said irrational circumstances. That's like as an example could be a, a young son who's thirteen years old who's not old enough to, um, um, you know, financially support his family. Maybe it's I heard of a specific case where he was a kid and he had like it was a single mom and she had just a thirteen year old kid and the kid killed himself because he felt like he couldn't help the mother and he, like support the two of them. Out of wow. financial and, pressure, and, and the dad was out of the picture. I think the dad was dead or out of the picture right. in some way. So, so, so it wasn't the mom who was in the provider type. Obviously, she was over eighteen. She, she was the adult. Here's the inappropriate question. Yeah. What color were they, or what what ethnic group did they belong Jewish to? Jewish color. They were Jewish. This was a Jew, this, this was a young. This was in Israel. Ah, Israel. Okay. Yeah. So this, but I could see that happening. This didn't feel like an American story. Really, I, I could see that happening. I think in the I 1920s, read the 1920s, maybe during the Great Depression. No, no, but, but I hear. But it's 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 a pretty. Thirteen year old though. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I wouldn't have expected it from an Israeli either. I think I, well, I would bet I would bet that if you looked uh, in, in cases here, it's something like that. It's I don't know about thirteen. No, dude, I don't know. Definitely not in the past. Thirty years. I feel like, but the idea is, but the idea is spoiled. that, I mean, but the idea is that there's the, more guys the, staying at home until they're thirty before well, they're, they're on the responsibility. <laughs> well, there's a lot of when they're thirteen. There's, there's a lot of lazy people provide. here, but I, the idea here is again that I don't know if it'll happen, but the idea is if if the same cultural values exist here, then it's as possible to happen here. Let That's me ask you. Let me ask you a question. In Israel, yeah. going to school until you're a certain age is mandatory, correct? Uh, or not? Not so. Is, is it illegal? Yeah, I think it is, is but truancy, I'm not sure. Is truancy illegal like it is here? If you're not in school and if, if, you're, if you're younger than 18 and you're not in school during school hours, uh, your parents get in trouble and you get in trouble. So you're not sure? I'm, I'm, or you don't think I'm that, really not sure. I, I went to a really strict school, so I can't, I can't right. tell you. How, I mean, it wasn't a, a situation for me. I don't think it was like Interesting. in my house. It okay. Was acceptable. Well, that's, that's, yeah, obviously education plays into a whole – it's a whole different factor that plays into all this, but it's but then again, it's these people under these yeah. cultural influences but, but that, I would that say, create the education. But so. in the in the terms of uh, being a man and the, right, the, right. this cultural value of being a man and supporting a family, it exists in Israel. No, about totally. The same, the, the I same never thing. bought either argument as to which is the more rational sex, just because I've always known that suicide was higher amongst men, and that's never rational. I, I mean, think. unless it's like you know, unless you kill yourself, I'm going to blow up your family. Actually, suicide how many Jack rates, Bauer scenarios? Actually, are there? suicide rates are higher amongst women. But that's what? completely irrelevant. <laughs> Women just use less no. uh, lethal means, so they so they true? die less. Yeah, but they actually commit more suicide attempts. But attempts. More, but, but that means that they have more they're intention. Mechan- they're just less mechanically inclined. Then. No, they, no, they, they just, just use guns cri- less. They're just they're less cries for help then, or they're more they use, cries for they're help. They're more likely to use. They're more likely to use uh, poison, drugs, like stuff like pills, where right. you could still you know pump their stomach and well, heal it. Where men are more more likely to use firearms. But Which isn't that in itself a le- okay? So, interesting. But it could be. But it could be in a, some way that it's a failure, a commitment, a conscious failure to never commit mind, to never, killing yourself. Never mind. That's what. I, that's my. That's my. That rationale. actually was so, a big theory in suicide. It used to be that a good way to describe to measure how how likely you are to commit suicide is how thoroughly you thought that you through, not how often you think about killing yourself. Right. So if you constantly think about killing yourself, but you've never progressed past that you're thought, just a narcissist. You're, you're not. <laughs> or you're. 
or whatever it is, depressed, you're unlikely sure, to sure, do sure. it. Sure. But if you thought all the way to... No okay, judgment, by the way. I'm going to say narcissist if, with, yeah. with the biggest... But if you got close to writing a letter to your parents or right. you thought about funeral arrangements, then you're mm-hmm. much more likely to... Right, yeah, once you're past it. it. That's, yeah, that's the scary... When you're giving stuff away, right? Yeah. When you're, when you're, when you're hugging people, saying, you know, it's, it's been great knowing you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when, when you're uh, giving your little brother the, the, the Letterman jacket from your wrestling team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's... Yeah, no, that's why I... So, hold on. So, just so I don't sound like a complete total jackass, the highest suicide rate accomplished dead, people who are dead through suicide... That's men, right? And that's all over the world, not just America? It's got to be. I, I don't know about the whole of the world. I, I remember the statistic. I think the statistic wasn't about one country. But, um, well, it's going to be difficult finding a study that... I'll, I'll just Google suicide rate. That should be, <laughs> that should be satisfying. I think it was all... I think it wasn't specific to a country otherwise. Because I read it in a general textbook. It wasn't, it wasn't a very um, kind of... Uh, specialized book so the, it would be pointless to say in america i think the point of it was that it was in the world so who suicides more men or women yeah uh um i th- i don't know I, most of my reasoning comes completely through just like you know uh ironically enough through intuition you know i i just feel like you hear more stories about you know, men committing suicide than you hear women. I mean, there's definitely, of course, the, the, the intentional men, overdose yeah. and stuff like that. But but it depends. There could be all sorts of reasons why that's the case without that reflecting a true uh, statistic. I mean, it could be a case where men just more likely to commit suicide uh, due to pressure, economic pressure. And if what you care about, for example, is acting, then, you know, maybe more men are b- going to be l- more actors, male actors are going to be likely to kill themselves, and therefore you hear b- about more men killing themselves. Um, where the, you know, it depends on the on the circumstance. But going back to, you talk about what was I thought was interesting, you were talking about rationality, and, you know, you know, uh, you know, you were looking at it from a gender perspective, which gender has more, you know, phobias and stuff, but I, th- I think that's a good, I have opinion of, I have an opinion of, on this that I can tie back to Buddhism that we never get to talk about, to talk, uh, it was, mention it, too much. It, it, it was getting a little boring, so I had to move things forward. Okay, but, but let, <laughs> let me add another yawner then. Um, All right. I, I feel like the, a person's, um, like, like I was briefly mentioning, a person's uh, fears are, are a factor of how strong their identity is. If a person has a very, very strong identity, it's just much more likely that things are going to clash with that identity. If you think, mm. for example, a super strong identity is, let's say, you're really identified with being, let's say you're an amazing athlete. You win gold medals consistently. And I, I know exactly what that feels yeah. like, so go ahead. Uh, excellent. Yeah. yeah, you're in prime shape right now for anybody who's, who's, who can't see. Uh, Less than 25% body fat. Yeah. Seven percent body fat. It's definitely less. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> not making. Un- do let's, not lie. Is one of the Buddhist not, precepts. Let's not throw numbers around. Like, <laughs> all right. Okay, For I example, apologize. There are more Seven than Roman th- digits. There are more than two hundred stars in the uni- no, in the known universe. That see, that's, that's, so that, that's an accurate statement, right? That's right? correct. Okay. Less than twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So you 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 don't have a majority of fat cells on you. Definitely correct. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely not a majority. Greater than. Muscle yeah. Greater than Smaller muscle. minority. Muscle greater than fat. Excellent. For sure. So, uh, you know, um, so in terms of identity, I was, I was sorry, just really quick. Uh, uh, the rates of completed suicides are indeed much higher among men than among women by about three to four times. So, oh, wow. so just, yeah, it's, it's, it's landslide. Just okay. anyway. Good point. So I was uh, saying it depends on how, how strong your identity is. Mm-hmm. So you can be, let's say you're an uh, exceptional athlete. You can have zero identity. Or you can, and then in, in that case, you won't experience a lot of uh, pro- mental issues uh, from a Buddhist perspective. But let's say you have, you're completely identified with that role, and you think that your total identity is that person, that person right. who's got to win gold medal every time. I am Peter the athlete. Right, Peter the athlete. So because your identity is so... Troy Davis is actually a better athletic name. Troy, every time, Tro- if Troy is really identified with this... Every time he's gonna get anything less than a gold medal, he's gonna experience suffering, because that that uh, interacts with, that um, conflicts with their with their identity of themselves. So they're gonna experience uh, 
you know, anger or um, failure, yeah. ex experience, a feeling of failure. That's why they say that uh, uh, players in really good teams, like a Barcelona team uh, for soccer, you know, they're exceptional athletes, and they they do describe that it, the feeling of loss is tremendously worse than what they feel like when they win. Mm. That's an interesting feeling. But uh, and in contrast, a person who has, let's say, a, a weaker identity, um, not as strong identity, maybe, um, you know, uh, you think, you know, you're a pretty good husband. That's a much more uh, more moderate ex expectation. So it's going to yeah. be more difficult for um, for things to sort of conflict with that unless you do something terrible like cheat on your wife or, you know, a beater or something. You're not going to – you're, you're going to be less likely to experience feelings I, that contribute. So uh, ironically, being less uh, impressive makes you more adaptable in a weird well, way. The, Emotionally. The, Emotionally more adaptable. Well, having – the idea is having less uh, Self. mental identification. You can be incredibly successful, like an, an incredibly successful scientist, but a, just a expect very little. Okay. And then you then you you won't experience much suffering. So that's why a lot of people that are very successful who used very kind of uh, egoistic energy to get very successful actually experience a lot of suffering because even though right. they're very financially successful, Salesman. they're constantly in a struggle to maintain that in their own mind. The successful person. That's why you hear of a billionaire that killed himself because he had $1 billion, his net worth, and he lost $500 million. He still was worth $500 million. It's not even a majority. But That's right. But he, um, but he had... It's almost half. <laughs> that's <laughs> right, big guy. <laughs> and the, the thing is, he, um, since he ha already had a plan of what to do with the billion dollars that he had, it doesn't matter that he could have done so, mon so many things with $500 million. In his mind, he was identified with that person, and he had to maintain that identity, and that wasn't good enough, so he killed himself. Wow. So it's not really the objective value, it's rather what kind of value we put on our own identity. Right. It's, it's how we interpret our accomplishments and, and what stage yeah. we put them on. That's why, I mean, I was going to say, salesmen must be really suicidal, hence the play Death of a Salesman. But yeah, um, yeah no, that, that must have made that, that, that those kind of high pressure, like I'm number one in the slot, and you know, a anything less than that's unacceptable. You know, you're the first or your last, and that whole yeah. mentality can totally, while accomplishing literally, uh, uh, you know, millions of dollars, it can also cost you your life. That's that's very it's, it's, that's super interesting, because so so my life of mediocrity is actually really, um, it, it's th who wins in the end is the question, right? I mean, yeah, but you can argue another question. You can say that goes with that line is like, so okay, so you don't have a motivation for yourself. Let's say, because you, you don't want to have all this suffering that I've just brought up. For example. So what would be your motivation? Here, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. I have a very, very strong identity uh -huh. when it comes to certain accomplishments. I believe, out of everyone in the world, I am the best at receiving head. Uh -huh. There is no person out receiving. there who's better at, at, at receiving Nobody oral, gets more pleasure. Like me. No one is good at receiving it. Meaning, uh -huh. when it's happening, I am the best at receiving uh -huh. it. See? So, so... There's really no way to challenge that or make me suicidally depressed because I fail at receiving it. So that's – is it something, something like that is, is what you're trying to get at? Uh, also, that has, does, I, does I'm that, trying to connect it to anything I was trying to get at. Well, does that break any – okay, well, let's, let's go full circle here. As far as sexual inappropriate, inappropriate behavior with women, according to Buddhists, mm -hmm. are you allowed to put in just the tip in a married woman? Are there any rules of that? Um, or – Nothing. Sub can you hold hands with a married woman, for example? Uh, you could, if if she was like on a cliff. Only if you're naked, I think is the only rule. All right, don't be silly now. We're trying yeah, to be I'm serious here. <laughs> all, right, yeah. all, right, all right, no, no, seriously though, seriously. Sir. Or were you allowed to make out with a chick at the temple or at the halfway house or whatever you call the retreat at the uh -huh. Buddhist retreat? Were you allowed to make out with a girl? Um, that obviously were there never any girls. First of all, were there any girls? There were girls at the there. Retreat? There were. It wasn't a – okay, the, it's a retreat center. A retreat, retreat is yes, a, sorry, something sorry. that – You're is right. An intense period of meditation. Yes, yes. A but retreat center. for, for um, the period that I was in the center, there are volunteers there. Mm -hmm. you know? No one married. Other Obviously. There are other female volunteers that were not married, and there are also um, people that were coming in that were volunteering maybe for only two days for a special event or a week for a special event. And there are also participants. But they're passerbyers, so maybe you can kind of get your dipstick without – Well, I mean, it was it was very obvious in the rules that we're not supposed to fraternize with other volunteers. Ah. I'd never saw a specific rule that said, what about a person – what about the male woman 
or you know, a, or the person who comes in for a different circumstance. So within but, the within the, yeah. the retreat center, you were not allowed to hook up with fellow, vol- or was it like really frowned yeah. upon, or was yeah, it yeah, yeah, it would be, it was, it was obvious, even though nobody had said anything about it, that the situation made it very obvious that you were, that it was not okay. Mm, but because the dorms was written. But listen, the, no, no, it was written that you're not supposed to fraternize w- in a romantic. No, no, no. There's no, 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 no. It was written. It was in the no va- romantic contact. No, so, yeah, no, no uh, inappropriate. Fraternization but see, it's all subjective to me because I'm Hispanic. For me, when you meet someone for the first time, mm-hmm. kissing them on the cheek. No, I've done that. Is but perfectly that, that's perfectly okay. Yeah. While they give you a tug job, reach around. You know? Okay. That, that's when you first meet someone. So, so, so nothing. If I, no skin to skin contact with the Are you asking me, you asking me to actually cock? rationalize a joke? No, obviously, obviously it wasn't. Um, obviously, it wasn't appropriate. All the dorms were from for. Uh, they were, they were one gender only. Ah, they were male not dorms, co-ed. female dorm. And it said so like after hours you were one of the precepts we were taking okay. every day uh, for for breakfast. You know, do not, you know, uh, no, no. We weren't even allowed to go and seek out entertainment to go and really like you guys couldn't a, catch a movie. Not even like kung fu. Logic continues. With it was encouraged. Well, obviously it wasn't. Nothing was prohibited, but it was for example. No, it meant more for the purpose of like going outside for parties. You know, after. After the which also the I, I also caught the whole no intoxication rule so no drinking which is pretty much what most guys use to uh, lubricate the social situation if you will well in so parties but yeah so they said the conditions perfect for not no the problem the problem yeah but the basically. by the way out of the f- five precepts the drinking one is the one that's considered the least uh, offensive. bad least offensive to break it's the idea is that when you break when you break that one, you're much more likely to break all the other ones. That's what make. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so you're more likely to make to cheat. You're more to, likely to to, to, lie to, to fuck so a guy if you're feeling tipsy, right? Right. right. So, so no. Op- well, I mean, that sounds like a great place I never want to go to. No uh-huh. offense, but I do like the principles involved, and I do find it that if everyone was a Buddhist, no crime would probably happen. Like mm-hmm. if everybody, even if, even if there were like Buddhists that would break some of the rules every once in a while, mm-hmm. you have to go, you have to jump through so many hoops to psychologically get to the point where you'd make all the big ones. By big, by big, cr- by big, uh, what'd you call it? Not rules, but precepts. Precepts. The, I mean, I'm guessing the biggest precept is like murder, rape, and theft, uh-huh. right? I mean, those are the biggest yeah. things. Not No Buddhist should ever think about doing yeah. those things. The idea is that they cause a lot of uh, societal suffering. Also cheating, I mean. If you if sure. you're involved with a married woman, you're causing you know you could be breaking off a marriage, and that could be suffering for all the children and the never grandparents. M- never mind that. You know what's the biggest cause for murder? Mm-hmm. Uh, money and lo- and jealousy. Yeah. So that's you all could leads be also to murder, facilitating that. I just want to go back to one perception of, of Buddhism. Sure. The, the way that they're explaining it, um, you know, you don't you really don't have to be monk. And actually, uh, many of the teachers that we had that actually had enlightenment experiences, which is basically the goal in Buddhism. Okay. Many of the highest teachers that we had were actually secular or, or lay teachers. So they weren't monks. They were married. They had regular jobs. Some of them, one of them was a doctor. Another one was a yoga instructor and a karate instructor hmm. with a family. So the idea in Buddhism, and this ties with the idea of the precepts, is you should go for, and this goes with what you're saying about being average or me- mediocre, is you should always go for the middle way, which is actually a principle uh, in Buddhism, which is th- the idea is that you shouldn't go, when you talk about uh, sensory seeking and s- stimulation, that could be, you know, if you're a person who loves, you know, that could be watching movies or eating food or, you know, sex or anything. You should go for uh, I a do path all those that's things not, in once, by the way. You go, that's the trifecta. You go for, <laughs> you go for things that are not, um, you don't want to go for a place where you're ascetic and you're actually denying your body, you know, you're living an unnecessarily harsh life. But on the other hand, you don't want to go in a situation where you're constantly experiencing pleasure because both of those ways are ways where you can uh, lead to suffering in your part. You, those are ways that Lack you can get of. attached. You're mm. either attached to pleasure where you you get so much pleasure that you just don't want it to go. And when you and if I put you in a room one day and not doing anything, you'll you'll suffer because you're constantly wired. And obviously, um, going ascetic and going very stern also means that you're kind of punishing yourself. Right. And you're suffering in that way. So, uh, a middle way is, is middle what's, way. What, what moderation. That's, that's moderation. That's it makes life even without religion, without Buddhism, it makes life much more much easier. If you can imagine totally. a person by just having them have you know one relationship, maybe a steady diet, uh, one job that's not too stressful, that's already their life will be much easier. I, I agree wholeheartedly. 
However, I do have to uh, aside with Achilles on this, and that's why no one will ever remember your name sort of kind of argument, which uh-huh. is the good die young, uh-huh. but they're remembered forever kind of thing. And so the, the really the egocentric side of me mm-hmm. would almost rather live that intense life if I'll be remembered or if I leave things behind like a legacy. Whereas ultimately, if I was really truly honest with myself, yeah. I'm most likely going to leave that down the middle kind of life, but I'll, I'll probably never get arrested. I'll definitely never kill anybody. Uh-huh. I'll certainly never, you know, steal outright, like rob something or, mm-hmm. or do anything violent just because it's not in me. And it's and I, I also har- I strongly believe in the, the idea of momentum. When people get they, – they, they gain a lot of traction when they're doing this kind of high emotional, high stakes – sort of lifestyles these adrenaline yeah. junkies out there who just need to constantly push those borders mm-hmm. you know if you're pushing the borders and how fucking moderate can i get that's yeah. someone that's a good citizen right there that's someone's not going to get that's too actually the, and, we call that karma in buddhism right that's that's a mo- that's momentum i am so fucking moderate right now it's not even it's not even uh-huh. safe how moderate i'm being right now yeah, yeah no, you're that's... being recklessly moderate <laughs> right now <laughs> the moderate the moderate levels are off the charts I've you're drinking been. that cup of coffee like, like an outlaw <laughs> <laughs> a neutral outlaw yeah my friend. tell my wife I said hello yeah. <laughs> yeah well that's great man I think that's all the time we have for now we're getting close to the hour mark and I think now's as good as ever time to mm-hmm. wrap things up but dude I want to thank you so much it's always, uh, it's always great chatting and yeah. I, I love talking about things that I don't know about so that A I can be corrected and B I can see how well my improv skills are so uh-huh. uh, thank you so much for that exercise and uh-huh. um, yeah uh, please 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 come back We'd love to have you, and um, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to these talks. Yeah, always. All right, great. Well, uh, for all you out there, thank you for listening. Uh, this is Jules, and uh, speaking for Abner, saying, "Hold fast and stay hard." Thanks.